So with all this talk of coffee lately, there's the inevitable question that comes from coffee enthusiasts and purists. They say, Super Derek, Super Derek, how do you take your coffee? And the answer, guys, is I'm just a normal dude. I take my coffee the way everybody else does, intravenously when I can and via mug when I can't. You know, when I'm slumming it. <laughs> that's uh, that's how I'm selling my coffee mugs. <laughs> come come drink your coffee from my mug when you're when you need to slum it too. You know when you need just need to get by. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the JRPG Weekly Update. I am Super Derek, and today we've got some. Uh, game announcements to go through, some localizations that are pretty exciting. We've even got some games that are coming out this week and some Super Derek news to talk about. But before we do any of that, I wanted to talk about sort of something that's not even really what I would say a news story, but just sort of a, you know, keep your ear to the ground sort of thing. You know, like whenever I say, oh, such and such game has been got a trademark renewed, like sort of that sort of thing. It's not really news, but it's something that you know, tuck it away for later in case you hear about this later on, because then you'll know that this was cool. <laughs> I'm not doing a good job of selling this, am I? Okay, well, here's what it is. Matsuzo Michida. And for those of you who think that sounds kind of familiar, that's because he was the artist behind Kodelka, and he was the writer and director of the Shadow Hearts games. So, kind of a big deal. These are some really great games, which you could check out by following the link over here there over there yeah that's where the link is <laughs> nudge nudge wink wink but don't check that out until after the end of this video these games were fantastic and this guy was a major uh major component into what made them so great well he has recently within the last few months started his own studio called studio wild rose and this studio has uh has a website and a blog where he's been intermittently updating it and one of the things that he just most recently did was he posted some artwork of yuri and alice from the shadow hearts games in it he was talking a little bit about the shadow hearts 18th anniversary and i think it's really cool that he's you know going back and taking a look at this obviously he's starting his own studio very recently they're probably already working on something and it looks like he's got shadow hearts on the mind and that could mean one of a couple of things. He either might be working on a Shadow Hearts 4 or might be working on maybe instead of a Shadow Hearts 4, maybe more like a spiritual successor. But whatever it is, you know, this game series is definitely on his mind and he's just posting about it and showing off some artwork that he drew. And it's really pretty artwork, although it really doesn't mean a whole lot yet. I, I just wanted to, to have this mentioned to you guys because this is really cool. He's thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Everybody's thinking about Shadow Hearts now. Uh, and he happens to have this brand new studio. Wonder what he's working on. But we don't know. And we won't find out for a while until they're going to announce something. And well, who knows when that'll be. If that'll be ever. That was the cool thing that, that caught my attention this week. And I think... Uh, that's going to be really cool for a lot of you guys as well. But we also have some other games to talk about. Death End Request 2 got announced just just recently. This is a game that's made by Idea Factory and Compile Hearts, the people who are probably most famous for their work in the Neptunia games. NepNep is something that I haven't really dug into yet. I do plan to eventually, though I hear that there are some good parts and some maybe tedious parts, but, you know, I'll get there when I get there. Now, Death End Request 2 was announced for the PlayStation 4, and it's so far Japanese only. They haven't talked about any sort of Western localization, no announcements of any sort of release date or even a window, but the game looks really cool so far from what I've seen in the trailer, which really isn't very much. All we can really assume is that it's going to play out a lot like Death End Request 1, which also looks like it plays really well. Uh, also, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition is, uh, well, this was a game that was originally released on the Vita and then ported over to the PlayStation 4. Well, now it's also coming to the Switch and to PC, and it's going to be releasing in October, uh, October 18th of this year. Way Forward, who you guys might know from working on uh, the Shantae series, they have recently announced River City Girls, 
in this game is kind of an interesting one to me. Looks like it's going to be a new entry in the Kunio Kun series, most notable for a lot of you guys as the series with River City Ransom. And this is apparently a, a sequel to that. It's got a planned release date of September 5th for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And I really loved River City Ransom and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I feel like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game was kind of a, a spiritual successor to River City Ransom, and they did a really, really good job. So all I'm kind of saying there is by bringing that up is that I really hope that River City Girls holds up in comparison to the Scott Pilgrim game that not many people can play anymore. I have a copy of it because I downloaded it at the time because it's a fantastic game and it had some amazing artwork by Paul Robertson, but that's really way off topic. So we're going to switch gears and talk about <laughs> uh, about this game that also got announced, uh, which fans of the Harvest Moon series will probably be happy about. Friends of Mineral Town. It's now instead of being called Harvest Moon, it's story of seasons friends of mineral town it's getting a remake it was originally released for the game boy advance back in 03 i believe but the remake is coming to nintendo switch it has an expected release date in japan of october 17th of this year however in the west again we have not yet received a localization announcement so the game looks like it could be really cool and hopefully it is <laughs> that's and that's all I can really say. And and knock on wood, hopefully we get a uh, a release over here. Though I do also realize that a lot of people feel like post-2000 Harvest Moon has been kind of lacking. And uh, a lot of other games have sort of picked up where that series left off. For instance, Stardew Valley and the Rune Factory games, which are far more entertaining than a lot of the newer Harvest Moon stuff. We also have some, uh, another port that got announced. This is a port that we knew about. It was really talked about it about a year ago. This was Langreaser 1 and 2, which we've known about for a good long while, but now they are coming to the West, which is really great. These games were uh, coming to the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and to PC. And uh, yeah, they're set to release here in early 2020 according to Nipponichi Software of America. And uh, we've also got some localization and release date updates, talking about Yokai Watch 4. We are also getting this in the States. This is a Nintendo Switch exclusive that is coming to the West, they say, as soon as possible, says Level 5. And we've got a trailer so far that shows Japanese audio with English subtitles, so I'm not sure if that means that this whole thing is going to be uh, Japanese dub when we get it over in the States. Digimon Survive, Digimon Strategy RPG, is uh, slated for uh, 2020 now. The game has been delayed quite some time. It is also slated for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Spike Chunsoft announced that Crystar is coming to the West, and this is an action RPG by Furuyu, and this is coming out uh, apparently on August 27th of this year. And it's going to be coming to PC, no, yes, Steam and PlayStation 4. And in other news, Trails of Cold Steel 3 got a new trailer. The game is coming to PlayStation 4 and will be released this September 24th of this year. So you can look forward to that. If you're chomping at the bit and you just really want to see what this game's all about, they got a new trailer you can go watch right now. In Super Derek news, the first couple weeks of the uh, JRPG Weekly update voicemail box so far has been a complete success if you guys have questions or want to just be on an episode and say say something say hi uh you can call the the voice line the 206-552-9095 and you will be able to be on the air and i will do my best to answer any questions that you may ask and last week, I released my review of Fallout New Vegas, which is my favorite Fallout title. Honestly, I chose to play this because I just needed something to wash the taste of the power of friendship out of my mouth after that Kingdom Hearts marathon. So this was the perfect palate cleanser for me for this time. <laughs> and uh, I got to be honest, even if this game isn't uh, really uh, on the forefront of your mind, I hope you take the time to check out this review because it is one of my videos that I am probably the most proud of up to this date. Uh, I believe that was review number 81 in the uh, the game collection reviews. So I'll, I'll put a link to that somewhere and, and you can check that out if you feel like being awesome. Over next on Twitch, I'll be playing through my 
my uh, first playthrough ever of Star Ocean The Second Story, which is, yes, that is the sequel to Star Ocean The First Departure, but I'm not playing through that one because this game is what was voted to the top by uh, supporters over in my Discord channel. Again, if you want to join the Discord, there's going to be links in the video description as well. Uh, but yeah, supporters over there who, uh, who are like patrons and Twitch subscribers ended up putting this up for vote and they said that this is the one that they wanted me to play. I'm skipping the first Star Ocean just to get to this one because it is fantastic and honestly, you guys have me pretty well hyped for this game at this point. <sighs> now we have some new RPGs that are coming out this week and we actually have a lot of them. Starting with Streets of Rogue, which is an action RPG that is coming to Nintendo Switch and Xbox One. Following that, we've got Dragon Quest Builders 2, which I've been hyped about and have been talking about for some time. I would not be surprised in the least if Wood is going to have a review talking about that before long on, over on his channel, Beat 'em Ups. Uh, and that is an action RPG with kind of like a Minecraftian uh, twist that's coming to PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch this week. God Eater 3, which is an action RPG, is coming to Nintendo Switch, and I believe it is already on PlayStation 4 and PC at this point. Uh, Tiny Metal Full Frame Rumble is a turn-based tactical RPG that is also coming to Nintendo Switch this week. And Dead in Vinland, the true Viking edition is coming to Nintendo Switch this week as well. And before I go for the week, I do, of course, have the weekly question, the question of the week. And this week, I am looking to start some fights down in the comments below. Let's let's get this, this, uh, this rumble going here, guys. It's time for a classic throwdown question, the age-old question. What do you prefer most, turn-based or action role-playing games? What is, what is your preferred go-to? <sighs> and the answer that I have to provide is that it obviously depends largely in uh, what mood I am in, especially like what game have I been playing recently. If I've been playing through a lot of turn-based games, I'll probably want to go play an action RPG and vice versa. But assuming all things being equal, I think I prefer... Ooh... I think I prefer turn-based RPGs a little bit more than action RPGs. <laughs> I know, it's kind of a tough thing because on the one hand, you've got games like Terranigma and Secret of Mana and Ys 8 and, you know, that's a lot of fun to play through. And then on the other side, you got the more methodic thinking man's sort of RPG experience where you got to be more tactically uh, minded and and pick and choose what things you want to do at a specific uh, pattern. And, and yeah, I think, though, that all things being equal, I lean toward the JRPG, the, the turn-based RPG, as opposed to the action RPG side of things. But it's super close. Anyways, guys, <laughs> with, that, with that bomb dropped, thank you all so much for joining me today. I am Super Derek, and this has all been news to me.